Hello, welcome to LCG's preview for the week ahead. I'm going to discuss the upcoming ECB meeting, uh, the importance of earnings season in the currently volatile markets, as well as the breakout in the price of gold. But before that, I'll run down the biggest events on the economic calendar. It's a slow start to the week, and then on Wednesday we have Eurozone Manufacturing and Services PMIs for October and the Bank of Canada rate decision. On Thursday there is German IFO, the European Central Bank rate decision, and US durable goods. Then on Friday it's preliminary Q3 GDP from the US. Q3 earnings season is in full swing, so moving on to the top corporate results to watch this week. Ryanair report first half results on Monday. Whitbread gives a half year update and 3M, McDonald's and Caterpillar report third quarter earnings on Tuesday. Deutsche Bank, Barclays, AT&T, Boeing, Visa, Microsoft and Ford Motors release their Q3 numbers on Wednesday. Uh, UBS, Lloyds, Daimler, Twitter, Coca-Cola, Nokia, Citigroup, Alphabet, Snap, Intel and Amazon.com report their Q3 earnings on Thursday. And then Royal Bank of Scotland, Nestle and Total give us their quarterly updates on Friday. So with regard to the ECB meeting, uh, the decision was made in, Decept in the, the last meeting in September to reduce asset purchases from 30 billion a month down to 15 billion. So in essence, what we learned uh, from the recent minutes is that the ECB continues to be uh, on its kind of pre-planned uh, uh, process for tapering its asset purchase program. Um, the ECB has become a bit more cautious on growth, that's understandable. There are global issues like the trade war, uh, the uh, downturn in emerging markets, uh, which all could obviously um, affect Europe and it, the European economic cycle. But so far, it doesn't seem to be enough to, to really just derail this excruciatingly slow uh, tapering, gradually leading to rate rise process that the ECB is in. So uh, we generally agree with the, the consensus at the moment for lack of other info that uh, Q4 2019 is when the ECB are likely to raise rates. And for the most part, yes, it's a transition to more normal policy, but it's still a fairly dovish approach to things. And uh, we think that probably uh, even the correction in markets that we're seeing at the moment isn't going to actually affect ECB policy. But should this correction in markets get larger, uh, you'd imagine that this very slow process um, is probably going to get even slower. That coupled with any market risk that we have, coupled with uh, very low core inflation, which remains uh, much slower than headline inflation, which has been pushed up by oil prices, uh, means that um, yeah, the ECB lowered their inflation forecast, and again, it's another reason for them to not rush into things when it comes to normalizing rates. Uh, moving on to earnings, so obviously the belief system in the market was shaken somewhat in this recent downturn, and so the, the going consensus thought at the moment is that we need some strong earnings uh, to help. Uh, clearly good earnings, um, they won't be a bad thing for the market, um, but I think probably a little bit too much emphasis has been put on earnings so far. So um, and it was a very good day for Netflix and IBM results and for some of the big banks, Goldman Sachs, uh, uh, Morgan Stanley, etc. We saw a big 500 point rally in the Dow uh, one day last week. But I think a large part of that is probably short covering, not so much massive enthusiasm for earnings. And so we probably... Um, we need to see a bit more uh, in, the, in the way of more steady, um, a, a steadier bond market to stabilize the markets. I don't think earnings are going to be the saving grace here. We already knew coming into this earnings season that earnings are supposed to grow 20% year on year, so it won't be a big boost to know that they officially have when we already thought that was happening anyway. Um, that added to the, the very te bearish technical looking uh, markets in, in Europe and China. Um, we tend to think that maybe this, uh, the, the move higher in the indices could falter out and we might be looking at another leg low in, in US stocks, even if there are some blowout earnings. Uh, so lastly, just, to, just discussing gold, um, we tend to think gold has found a base here, um, but obviously we've had some very bearish action leading into this, uh, and so gold can't turn around on a dime. 
Uh, probably the best hope for gold is it becomes more of a preferred haven again. And we saw the first inklings of that in the, 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 sell, uh, the sell off from a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't the dollar that everyone went to. Actually, the dollar moved lower. Um, it was gold eventually that everyone moved into. Um, it went higher on the day of the biggest sell off and then broke out uh, when we sold off again the next day. So I think what we need to see really for gold to do well is for not only the dollar to be uh, edging lower against the major currencies as it has been, but it also needs to drop against the emerging, uh, the emerging market currencies too, uh, like it did in the recent sell off. Right, well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, good luck for trading this week. And if you want to see these videos as soon as they're released, please follow LCG on YouTube and social media.